Hey everyone, welcome back to another video. This is part two of working through the anomaly machine here on Hack Smarter. What's cool about this machine, this is a multi-machine challenge. So we have a web server as well as a domain controller. In part one, we began our enumeration and we were able to get a shell on the web server. And in part two, we're gonna pick up right where we left off. Our goal today, hopefully, is we can figure out a way to compromise the web server, and then we'll have to figure out a way to pivot over to the domain controller. All that being said, let me share my screen and we shall dive into this together. So here I am, I have the shell as before, I can run commands, but you can already tell that my shell is a little bit ghetto. It, it's not stable. And one of the best things you can do when you get on a machine is to stabilize your shell. That gives you access to doing things like clear, makes it look a little a bit nicer, gives you better functionality depending on what you are running. But here's the thing. I don't know about you guys, and actually let me know for those of you in the live stream, uh, does anyone actually have this memorized? Because I always forget the syntax. Uh, there's multiple things you have to do. You could just stabilize it with Python, yes. But for a full stable shell, there's actually a few different things that you do. But there is an extension for Firefox as well as Chrome called Hack Tools. It's open source, you can download it if you search for it, but I absolutely love this extension because I always forget the syntax of stuff and this extension helps me remember the syntax. So I'm just gonna open it in full screen mode. And over on the left side, we have TTY spawn shell. This is just how you stabilize a shell and you can kind of script kitty your way through it. So I'm gonna quite literally copy and paste this. We'll do this command. All right, and then we do control Z. And then we can do this command. Oh, oh, wait, what did I do? Did I kill my shell somehow? Um, don't do whatever I did. I don't know how I killed my shell. What did I do wrong? Oh, uh, it looks like our script timed out. I don't know if it was something I did or something on Jenkins, but it looks like our script timed out. So good to have in the video because maybe you're run into the same issue. Oh, the fl it, it will be flagged for being a virus because it has like reverse shell syntax and stuff in it, but it is definitely safe. Let me go ahead and grab this shell again. I don't know why it died. You know what I'm going to do? Inst I'm just going to stabilize it with Python. I don't know if something I ran broke it. So I'll just get a semi-stable shell with Python for now, and we'll just continue to enumerate and see what we're able to find on the machine. So we are the Jenkins user. We can first try, well, I like to see first what groups are we in? And that's what the ID command will do. It'll, sometimes you might be in a special group that allows you to read log files, for example, and ID is a great command to run. I also like to document what I'm doing in my notes. So I'm gonna go down here and I'm gonna do like post compromise and web server. And as we enumerate, we'll drop our notes in there because you never know when something might come in handy later on in the course of your enumeration. So I'll drop that in there. That's checking our groups. If Python's not accessible, there's multiple different ways. You just need to Google. This is the anomaly machine from HackSmarter. We can try sudo-l. And it looks like this might be our way to privilege escalation. Now, for those of you new, let me explain what I just did. Sudo-l says, hey, are there any commands? Are there any scripts? Are there any binaries that we can run as the root user? And we can see that as the root user, we can run this router config command. I don't know what it actually does, but if we're able to run it as root, there's a good chance that we might be able to escape it and drop into our own root shell. So let's add this to our notes as well. I'm gonna copy this and go over to the right notes one and we'll just make a note of this. We do have pseudo permissions. This is likely the way forward, but we need to figure out what does this router config thing actually do. So let's find out. I'm gonna go ahead and copy this and the first thing I'm gonna do is just run it. And it says, welcome to router configuration utility. The usage does that. And then it asks for a config file. So that's interesting. What if I do sudo that dash H? Does it give me any idea of what to do? And it says, no, it just says configuration applied successfully. So what if 
So we're here in Jenkins. We could look at secrets and stuff, but I don't think there's any other users. I'm just gonna go to temp for now. And I'm gonna touch like hacksmarter.txt. And I'm gonna run that now on hacksmarter.txt. I don't know what it does. It says applying hacksmarter.txt not found. Okay, but then configuration applied successfully. Seems like a little bit of a buggy thing, but here's something that you'll notice when you do an internal pen test, you'll discover things like this that are buggy and you just have to kind of experiment with it to figure out what the heck is working. Let me pseudo that. And if I specify the full path to it, then what happens? Okay, applying config and then I get permission denied. Really, permission denied? That doesn't make much sense. Um, hmm. So now I just wanna know how does this work? Can I cat it or is it like a legit binary? Let's find out. Okay, it's an actual binary. Uh, welcome to router configuration. There's some text that we can read in there, but a small binary. We could try strings on it. But there's probably nothing interesting in strings. I just wanna get a feel for what the heck it's actually doing. We see the usage files there. All right, so can I clear now? No, we can't clear because we don't have a fully stable shell. There's a few things that we could check. One is if I run this binary and I'm just gonna say hacksmarter.txt, can I escape it? Like, I don't know what it's doing on the back end, but maybe I can escape it and make it run it's my own command. And no, it just runs it as, as Jenkins. Router config. Uh, well, if we do hack smarter dot text and, and who am I? Okay. That doesn't work either. And if we cat, where did hack smart dot text go? It's right here. Does hack smarter dot text have anything actually in it? Oh, what is up overgrown carrot? Good to have you here. So for those of you who do not know overgrown carrot, AKA Ryan is the creator of this machine, but yes, we are diving into Anomaly to figure out what we are able to do. We're on the Ubuntu machine and we're just experimenting with that pseudo permission. So we can't escape commands that way. We don't really know what it's doing. We could try just like yellowing it. Oh, and there we go. So that actually does work. So we did find a command execution vulnerability. So what it's doing is it's taking user input. It's not sanitizing it or checking it and passing it directly to whatever this router config is. And then it's running the command as the root user. So you can see we have the result right there that we are able to abuse this for command execution. Let's go ahead and grab that and add it to our notes. And we'll say, uh, I'm gonna do H3. And we'll say, we have root permissions. Ryan said, that looked like a real attack I did a few months ago, and this was the same process. And that's that's what I love, guys, about the Hack Smarter platform, especially Ryan's machines and really all the authors and creators, but the machines that you see are informed by real pen tests. We're not just trying to make a silly puzzle. This is very uh, realistic. But now that we have this, I mean, there's multiple different things that we could do to get a shell. But we could do something uh, simple like, I, I did not mean to do that. No, get out of this. I don't know the password for Jenkins. Okay, there. Let me grab this command right here. Something break when I do that? Okay, no, it does work. All right, so sudo that. What if I do like bash dash I to open up a shell? And there we go. With bash dash I, all I'm doing is saying, hey, drop me into an interactive bash shell. And you can see that we are fully the root user now. So we have compromised that. I'll grab this and just add it to our notes, showing how to get a full stable root shell. And we'll just say full uh, root shell with the bash dash I flag. I'm looking over at chat.
Yeah, it said Jenkins the first time, but now it's saying root. I think, unless I missed it. I mean, it shows root to me, and now we are the root user. And thank you, JJ. I appreciate the kind words. And yes, thank you, Jesse, for dropping that. The Hacking Active Directory, that is Ryan's course. You guys all should go buy it right now. You would enjoy it. He's a great teacher and great red teamer and pen tester. Uh, anyways, we have access to this machine as the root user. I think potentially we might be able to find the user flag. I'm not actually sure, but let's check. And it is right there. We have the user flag. So I'm gonna go ahead and get credit for this flag. I'm gonna copy the flag and jump over to the HackSmarter platform if I can find the right tab and drop in our flag. So we have the user flag. Congratulations, great work, great job, everyone. But we have compromised it and we have the user flag. But you might be a little bit confused because you're like, Tyler, you're the root user. How come you only have the user flag? Well, remember what's really cool about this machine is it's a multi-machine lab. So yes, we have compromised this web server, but we still wanna figure out a way to get to the domain controller. And the web server, I mean, we've compromised it, but we don't have any domain credentials. So now we just want to explore, enumerate. Let's see what we're able to find. Let's do some post exploitation and see if we can find credentials or something that will give us access to the actual domain controller. We'll first go over to the home directory and say, hey, what users are on this machine? And unfortunately for us, it looks like we just have an Ubuntu user. Not gonna be helpful for us at all. I mean, we could, we could build like an SSH backdoor. And you know what, what I'm actually gonna do? I'm gonna go over to root and I'm gonna CD into SSH. And I'm go, I am going to give myself an SSH backdoor so we can easily SSH in and we can continue enumerating from there. I will say one really cool thing about HackSmarter that I don't think any other platform does is you can save your progress after you set up persistence. That's one of the things I love about our platform. So for example, if you were working through this lab and you set up like a backdoor SSH access and you didn't wanna to have to repeat that, if you just stop your machine when you're done, it will save your progress. And five days from now, when you have some time, you wanna dive back in, start the machine back up, all your progress is saved. It's always a private instance. You don't have to deal with anyone else on your machine, but I'm gonna go ahead and set up an SSH backdoor, which sounds complex, but it's actually pretty easy. And I'll show you how we do this. I wanna cat out uh, my SSH uh, public key. So here's my SSH public key, and I want to add my public key to the root user's authorized keys file. That tells the system that, hey, any key that is here, that user can SSH in, or at least it should be able to unless SSH's root is not allowed, which is also a possibility. But I'm gonna echo, paste in my public key, and I'm gonna append it into authorized keys like so. And if I read authorized keys, we should see our key appended into that, which you can see it right there. Now, uh, depending on the configuration, we might be able to SSH in as the root user on anomaly, geez, I can't type, anomaly.hacksmarter, and we don't even have to specify our key because it should automatically use our private key. And there we go. We have a very much stable session now, and we have backdoor access to this machine, which is helpful in a real world engagement as well, because up until that point, we just had a reverse shell with Jenkins. That's not very stable. Let's say the Jenkins server goes down or they remove the Jenkins server, like something happens, we just lost access. So a good thing to do in a real engagement is to figure out some way to have a backdoor persistent access to a machine, especially in a red team engagement, so that you have access to the machine regardless of what the blue team does. But we now have access. Is this lab on the Hacksmurder website? It is, it's called Anomaly. If you go down to hands-on labs, you will see it. But we no longer need this one. So I'm just gonna exit out of this. We can exit out of this fully. We have a nice stable shell as the root user, and I'll just call this SSH root. And honestly, this is a very good natural stopping point, at least for the standalone video here on YouTube. I showed you in this video how we could go from Jenkins to the root user. 
how we could elevate our privileges by abusing the router config. But then I also showed you how to establish persistence. And since our machines save on HackSmarter, well, this is a good spot to save your progress. So go ahead and add your SSH key to the root users authorized keys file. Then you have that persistent SSH access, and then you can begin your enumeration. So, hey, what I want you to do first is try this on your own enumerate as the root user, not that you have that persistent access and see if you can figure out some way to pivot from the web server over into the domain controller. Give it a shot on your own first. If you get stuck, that is fine. Then you can join me in the next video and we'll continue working through this together.